Sega was a loser without any friends who lives in modern-day Japan, but one day while he was sleeping, he suddenly gets Ishikade to a world full of magic, wizards, and magical creatures, where he falls to the ground inside a magical academy surrounded by mages. He is shocked because he doesn't remember seeing Truck Kun before he came here while everyone starts laughing at the way he was dressed. Louise the mage who summoned him tries to abandon him just like his dad and tries to summon a different familiar, but the teacher doesn't allow it and forces her to make a contract with Sato. She moves towards him, but he backs off as he doesn't trust women, but Louise tells him to stay still and forges a contract between them, and a mark appears on his hand, which means the bond is created. He learns that Louise is a mage that belongs to a noble family, but is totally useless when it comes to magic and all her spells always fail and backfire, which is the reason why everyone calls her Zero. She takes him back to her room still pissed at him and starts treating like a servant and throws her clothes at him to wash. Sato tries to man up and tells her to shove it, but she gets her wand out and casts a spell on him which fails and creates another explosion. When everyone calms down a bit, Sato decides to take his chances and run out of the room into the halls where he bumps into a dumb blonde dude called Gooch. He doesn't stop and keeps running till he's outside of the building while Louise runs after him but Gucci uses his magic to lift Sato off the ground into the air, while all he can do is flail his arms as he spots two moons in the sky realizing that this is not a nightmare and he actually got transported into a parallel world. That night Sato had to sleep on the floor and Louise chained so he couldn't run away at night. She tossed her clothes at him and told him to wash them, which he reluctantly agreed to realizing it was the norm in this world. Then she slept beside her bed, and the next day, he woke up early to wash her clothes and brought them to her. She mentioned more unwashed clothes in her drawer, which irritated him, but he let it go. She asked him to help her get dressed, but he refused, saying he wasn't her servant and would only do it if she unchained him. She agreed and he dressed her. After being released from the chains, they went to the dining hall for breakfast. Sigido, who hadn't eaten since arriving in this world, was hungry but noticed people whispering and staring at them. Louise instructed him to pull out her chair and she told him to sit on the ground near her toes. He ate a piece of stale bread on a broken plate. After breakfast, they went outside, and he saw other students bonding with their familiars. He bumped into Frederica, who had a fire-breathing salamander as her familiar. She mocked Louise, suggesting that she'd sneaked in a peasant to pretend she'd summoned a familiar. Louise got upset and walked away. Sato accidentally collided with a maid named Siesta, who dropped a cake. They both apologized, and he picked up the cake and placed it back on the plate. Siesta! A fellow peasant shared that she was just a servant, unlike familiars. Gritch, who Sato had seen flirting earlier, called Siesta over and Sato asked if he could deliver the cake to him, to which she agreed. He took the cake to Gooch, who was with a girl, and overheard Gooch claiming he had no one else in his life but her. Sato couldn't help but laugh at the lie. Gooch asked what was funny, and Sato revealed that he'd seen Gooch flirting with a first-year girl the day before. Gooch tried to deny it, but Sato pointed out the girl from yesterday, exposing Gooch's deceit. Both girls learned about each other and slapped Gooch, who fell to the ground. Gucci challenged Sato to a duel, which he accepted. Louise insisted he apologize, but Sato ignored her and walked to the duel location. Gucci was surprised Sato showed up. Louise tried to intervene, mentioning duels were forbidden on campus. Gucci argued that duels between nobles were banned, but Sato, a peasant, made it acceptable. The duel began, but Gucci used a robot to fight for him instead of facing Sato directly. Sato got punched by the robot, fell, and was encouraged by Louise to yield, but he refused. Despite his injuries, he kept getting up, and Gooch gave him a sword, thinking Sato couldn't lift it. Surprisingly, Sato felt his pain recede, became stronger, and sliced the robot in two in one slash. Gooch summoned more robots, but Sato defeated them all before holding a sword to Gooch's throat, making him surrender. People were astonished that a peasant had beaten a noble, and Louise rushed to him. Exhausted, Sato fell unconscious. He woke up in a familiar bed, covered in bandages, Siesta was in the room, and she informed him that he had been unconscious for three days. Louise was also there, sleeping by the window, exhausted from watching over him. Sato's life comes back to normal, as now he has to wash all the clothes and dress Louise up every single day. One day, he goes to class alongside her, and in the class, she gets made fun of as everyone starts calling her Louise the Zero, which amuses Sato. After coming out, he asks Louise about it, and she explains to him why she is called that, which he finds very funny, and starts laughing at her, enraging her even more. He ends up making a song to mock her more for no reason. What a dumbass. Louise gets mad at him and refuses to give him any food that day. In the night, Sato constantly begs her for food, and when finally she agrees to give him dinner, Sato the giant mung skull ends up mocking her name again, which enrages her again, and she forces him to sleep outside. While trying to sleep outside, he is seen by Siesta, and he tells her that he has been kicked out by Louise and hasn't eaten anything. 
Siesta ends up taking him to kitchen, where a bunch of workers give him a lot of food because he is the only peasant who ever was able to defeat a noble. He eats his fill and returns back to his cot outside Louise's room, where he is captured by Frigerica's salamander, who kidnaps him and takes him into her room. She tries to seduce him to switch sides from Louise to hers, but before he could do anything, Louise arrives in the room and drags him back to her room. She explains to him that her family and Frederica's family are at odds, and even though she doesn't care about him, she will not let him be near Frederica. Sato, however, seems to have the social skills of a skunk, and ends up asking whether she is jealous to which she loses her mind and beats the crap out of him. After that, she tells him to go to sleep quietly, as they are going to town tomorrow. Seiko starts going out again, but she stops him and tells him that he can sleep inside the room, which he thankfully accepts. The following day, Louise took Sato to town on horseback. She told him that Frederica seemed interested in him and insisted he needed a way to defend himself. They visited a blacksmith's shop where Louise asked for their best sword but was shocked by the price. She then asked for something within her budget and settled on an old rusty sword. That evening, Frederica entered their room with a golden sword they couldn't afford. She gave it to Sato, asking whose side he wanted to be on. Sato appeared confused as he wanted the expensive sword, but during their argument, a voice emanated from the rusty sword, calling both girls idiots. Sato denied it was him, and they realized the voice came from the rusty sword itself. Sato greeted the sword and they introduced themselves. Sato, feeling friendless, was happy to have found a companion and decided to keep the old sword over the expensive one. The next night, Sato washes one of Louise's silk dresses, but keeps failing miserably at it, just like he has failed at everything else in his life. Suddenly, he is approached by Siesta, who helps him and cleans the cloth for him. She later says a very sad goodbye to him and goes away. The next day, Louise tells him to stay outside with the other familiars while she takes the class, and he agrees. While waiting outside, he is approached by one of the chefs from the kitchen, who invites him to the kitchen for some food, and while there, he looks for Siesta but is unable to find her. He asks the chef, who replies that Siesta quit the academy this morning and has been taken away by a nobleman named Count Mott. He is very confused and later goes back to Louise's room and discusses this with her. She explains to him that when such noblemen take a maid with them it is because they want her to become their mistress, even if it is against their will. He is totally shocked by this and asks her whether she is not enraged at this. But to her, this is a very normal occurrence, and she replies that she feels bad for Siesta, but there is nothing they could do for her. Later that night, he ends up running from the castle and runs to the Count's house. He enters it, but his pathetic ass is immediately caught by the security guards, who take him to the Count. Seda, with all of his intelligence, stupidly replies that he is here because he heard the Count was evil. The Count looks at him and tells him to piss off if he wants to live, but Sega refuses to run away and asks the Count what would make him let Siesta go, to which the Count replies that if he could bring the book that Frederica has, which is a family heirloom, he would let Siesta go. He quickly runs back into the forest, where he is found by Louise who came looking for him. She takes him back and tells him to shut up and sleep as they can't do anything about this. He agrees with Louise and lies to her that he's going to sleep before sneaking his way into Frederica's bedchambers and requesting the family heirloom. Frederica surprisingly doesn't really care about the heirloom and readily gives it to him on the condition that he goes out with her. This disgusts him, and he rages out of the room, surprising even her, who is now curious as to what made him so angry. He gets a sword and grabs one of the horses, before setting out for the Count's house. Meanwhile, Frederica goes over to Louise's bedroom with her friend Charlotte, waking her up and notifying her about Sato's behavior. Louise is shocked to find him gone and is confused as to where he went, but Charlotte replies that she believes that he went over to the Count's place again. They all mount Charlotte's dragon and rush over to the Count's place. On the other hand, Sato tries to sneak into the Count's mansion again, but is immediately caught by the guards and presented before the Count. Sato decides to draw his sword against him, which enrages him as no peasant can draw a weapon on a noble. He breaks open a vase and uses the water inside of it to attack Sato. Sato falls over and before he could recollect himself, the Count converts the water into short daggers and throws them towards Sato. Thankfully, Louise arrives at the very last moment and blasts the daggers away, saving Sato's life. The Count is shocked to see the daughters of such great houses at his place and calms down a bit, deciding to talk things over. He tells Louise that for what Sato did, he deserves to have his head chopped off, but Louise pleads with him to let him go and punish her instead. Frederica asks him whether there is anything that would make him forgive Sato for his slight, and he replies that if he could get her family heirloom, he would forgive him. Frederica immediately pulls the book out and presents it to the Count, who excitedly takes it and starts flipping through it happily. Sato reminds him of his promise, and the Count absent-mindedly tells the guards to release Siesta and let her go. Sato is curious as to what is in the book, 
and he realizes that it is just a loot magazine from modern-day Japan, and it must have been summoned by Frederica's predecessors similarly to how he got summoned here. Siesta thanks him for his help, and kisses him on the cheek before they all return to the academy. After a few days, Louise suddenly got excited about an upcoming exhibition where students would showcase their familiars to win a prize. Seda found her sudden enthusiasm strange because she had never cared about such things before. She began teaching him manners and how to speak properly, but her efforts didn't work. She also tried to fix his posture, but that proved unsuccessful too. Luis couldn't think of any talent he could showcase until Seda jokingly suggested demonstrating his laundry skills, which earned him a well-deserved scolding. Then she remembered his sort of fighting skills and asked if he could show them off. However, Seda declined, still feeling embarrassed about his previous sword mishap. Luis insisted he practice to avoid embarrassment during the exhibition. Seda practiced in the yard, but he looked quite amusing to onlookers as he struggled to find his balance. Siesta informed him that Princess Henrietta was visiting their academy, which motivated everyone to excel at their duties. Princess Henrietta arrived, and after the initial formalities, she seemed like a friendly and elegant young girl. That evening, Louise asked Sato how his sword training was going, but he admitted he was having trouble with his balance. He jokingly suggested showcasing his cloth-washing skills again, which irritated Louise. Before she could respond, a hooded figure entered the room and hugged Louise. To their surprise, it turned out to be the princess herself. The princess and Louise shared their childhood friendship, revealing how close they were. The princess appreciated the companionship she had with Louise after her father's death. Despite Louise apologizing for Sato's behavior, the princess laughed it off and wished them luck for the upcoming exhibition. On the day of the exhibition, Louise felt nervous. During Sato's turn, Louise introduced him as her peasant class familiar, which made everyone laugh. Despite feeling embarrassed, the princess didn't join in the laughter. Sato's demonstration didn't go well, and he ended up as the butt of jokes. Louise, mortified, quickly pulled him off stage. Outside, they encountered a giant golem that attacked them. Sato shielded Louise but got captured. Louise attempted to use a fireball spell but accidentally damaged a tower. This scared the golem away but not before it grabbed something and fled. Sato was saved by Charlotte, who was flying on her dragon. Later, a committee was formed to investigate the thief, but no leads had surfaced yet. The next day, both Louise and Sato were in class, and Frederica continued her relentless pursuit of Sato. She brought tasty food to the class, knowing that Sato didn't get such treats while staying with Louise. She even fed him herself, much to Louise's annoyance. Suddenly, a teacher entered the classroom and asked Louise, Frederica, and Charlotte to follow him. They were led to the headmaster's chamber, where he discussed the peculiar theft of a secret weapon from the castle. The headmaster suspected foul play and urged everyone to be vigilant, believing the thief was someone familiar with the academy. The headmaster had a sketch of the thief, although her face was hidden by a hood. They knew she had headed into the jungle after stealing the weapon. He asked for volunteers to capture the thief, but surprisingly, no one wanted to pursue her due to the dangerous golem accompanying her. Even the headmaster was disappointed by the noble's reluctance to act. However, Louise raised her hand volunteer, with Charlotte and Frederica following suit. This surprised everyone, and they voiced concerns about three third-year girls taking on the thief by themselves. The headmaster commended their bravery and revealed their exceptional abilities. Charlotte's anointed knight status, Frederica's strong flame magic, and Louise's lineage of powerful mages, along with Sato's swordsmanship skills, made them a formidable team. The headmaster's secretary also volunteered to guide them through the forest, and the headmaster approved. The group ventured into the forest and discovered tracks left by the thief, Along the way, Frederica offered the sword she had bought for Sato, and after Louise's silent approval, he accepted it. They followed the trail to a secluded cottage deep in the wilderness. Charlotte used her magic to scan for hidden traps, but finding none, they entered. Inside, they found an abandoned cottage with broken plates and furniture strewn about. Just as they were about to leave, Charlotte discovered the stolen item, the Staff of Destruction. However, their exploration was interrupted when Louise's screams reached them from outside. A golem had returned and attacked them. Charlotte attempted to use wind magic against it, but it was ineffective. Frederica used her flame magic, which had some effect but was insufficient to defeat the golem. Charlotte summoned her dragon to help, but Louise, feeling sidelined because of her imperfect magic, attacked the golem repeatedly, drawing its attention. When the golem went for a final strike, Sato saved her just in time, but he slapped her to make her realize her worth. Louise confessed that criticism about her poor magic skills hurt her deeply. As the golem continued to attack, Sato fought bravely with the sword Frederica had given him, but it broke. In desperation, he drew the rusty sword on his back, which promised not to break. Sato felt a surge of energy and began attacking the golem with newfound strength. Despite repeatedly damaging it, the golem's regenerative abilities kept it going. 
Louise, determined to contribute, tried to use the Staff of Destruction, but couldn't operate it. The Golem closed in on her, but Sato saved her again, taking the Staff from her. Sato recognized it as a rocket launcher from modern-day Japan. He set it up and used it to destroy the Golem. Relieved Charlotte, Frederica, and Sato rejoined Louise and the Headmaster's secretary took the stolen item. However, Sato realized the secretary had acted strangely calm throughout. She removed her glasses and untied her hair, revealing herself as the thief named Fock. She taunted them but was swiftly knocked out by Sato before she could fire the weapon. On the way back, Sato explained that the weapon was a rocket launcher from his world, which was why he knew it could only be fired once. In the headmaster's chambers, they were congratulated, and they learned they were to go to the capital to retrieve their reward for capturing the thief. Later, at the capital, Sato watched from the sidelines as people danced and had fun. Suddenly, he saw Louise enter the hall in a beautiful dress, and instead of dancing with anyone else, she walked up to him and asked him to dance, which he gladly accepted. The next day, Louise and Sato are invited to the royal palace where Henrietta thanks them for saving the day. She then moves towards Sato and gives him her hand to kiss, but his dumbass doesn't understand what it meant. Louise tells him to kiss it and Sato suddenly becomes a Jigachat and kisses the princess on the face instead of the hand, knocking her out. After that, he gets beaten up by Louise who begs for forgiveness before punching Sato away. Henrietta tells her that it's okay and that she wants a favor from them, and Louise agrees to do anything for her. The princess tells her that they will have to live in the town for some time as she wants them to pose as normal people and spy on the town as she has heard news about aristocrats treating the common people very badly. Louise immediately agrees and says that they will do whatever she wants them to do without question. Later that day, Louise comes out of a shop dressed in plebeian clothes that she doesn't really like but is forced to wear to blend in. She then takes him to a stable where she tries to buy a horse but realizes that they are very expensive and they can't buy it yet. Then she finds a five-star hotel and tries to get a reservation, but the hotel only allows posh wankers in and they don't have enough money to get a room. She starts getting frustrated and when Sato suggests that they get a cheaper room, she blows up on him and walks away. Later in the evening, Sato finds her sitting alone on a bench and she reveals that she lost all of the money they had in a casino because she wanted more money. Sato tells her that they should go back to the princess and ask for more money, but she refuses, saying they can't fail her. Sato complains about being hungry when suddenly a very woke man comes straight from the pride parade and gets into Sato's face asking whether they want a place to stay for the night as he is willing to lend them a room on one condition. The condition ends up being Louise having to work as a waitress at an inn alongside other girls as the man breaks all the gender norms alone. Louise seems to be really mad while Sato is forced to help in the kitchen under a woman named Jessica, while the girls clean up the tables and the walking rainbow flag tells them that whoever gets the most amount of tips will get a massive bonus alongside his heirloom-made outfit that he wears every night. He explains that the outfit is magical, and whoever wears it receives tips from everyone in the area and explains that the girl who wore it last time got so much money that she left this job and became an Instagram influencer. The dining service starts and Louise gets her first table with some wine, but the customer asks her to pour it out which pisses her off as he is just a peasant. She hides her anger and pours the wine out but ends up spilling it and the customer starts acting creepy around her asking whether she has Snapchat. She gets mad and throws the wine on his face before threatening to kill him but the pride parade quickly hugs the customer before sending her off to get some napkins while he cleans the customer's face with his lips. Somehow the first dinner service gets over as Louise rants about it to Sato who tells her to chill out as they have a place to sleep and food to eat, while he makes his bed and lays down ready to sleep as it is normal for him. While Louise is having trouble adapting, Louise is unable to sleep and spots some bats that scare him down on the floor and she ends up sneaking her way into his blanket for safety and sleeps. The next couple of nights she tries but keeps attacking the customer again and again due to one thing or the other. The Pride Parade tells her to stand aside and watch the other girls for a while as she simply feels that she cannot do any of this and notices Sato having fun which angers her so she throws a bottle at his head knocking him out. He wakes up in bedroom and finds Jessica who tells him that he got knocked out before asking him whether Louise is an aristocrat. This immediately worries Sato who tries to hide this fact but Jessica laughs and says that Louise can even carry a plate properly while her attitude and confidence clearly says that she is a noble woman. Sato confesses that he is on a secret mission which excites Jessica who asks him for details but Louise ends up entering the room and he immediately stands up before introducing Jessica as the Pride Parade's daughter. Louise doesn't give a crap and kicks him straight in the balls knocking him out once again before dragging him outside but Jessica stops him and asks whether she made any tips till now. Louise gets flustered and tells her to mind her business and when Sato tries to say anything she kicks him in the face again. 
The next night, Lee stands aside worried about not winning the bonus as today is the last day when Humpty Dumpty enters the inn alongside his guards and is immediately catered to by the rainbow flag. The entire inn is full and there were no seats, but the guards make the entire inn empty while he sits on his fat ass asking the sausage loving man to start serving him. Jessica informs Seda that this guy is a tax collector. If they don't cater to him properly, they get taxed very heavily. She tells him that no one wants to serve him when they notice Louise walking up to him with a tray hoping to get a fat tip, but the fatty is not impressed and makes fun of her and end up annoying her to the extent where she gets mad and kicks him in the face, shocking every single person at the inn as the guards surround her, while the pride parade asks for forgiveness. Sato ends up coming in front and tells Fatty to get lost as he won't let anyone touch Louise. The Fatty orders the guard to attack while Sato reaches for his sword only to realize that he forgot to bring it from his room. He gets scared and starts crying but Louise uses her wand to explode them away, which shocks the Fatty as he realizes that Louise is not some normal peasant and must be a high-class lady. He still thinks that she might be a no-name house but she shows him the royal decree which scares him to the core and he offers her a bunch of money to settle this matter here while asking for forgiveness. Louise tells them to piss off and they all run outside while Louise gets surrounded by the serving girls who thank her for what she did and even the pride flag is happy with her, while Jessica shows her that the money given by Fatty makes her the highest earning girl in terms of tips and the owner declares her the winner of the competition. That night, they go back to bed while Sato thinks about what they are going to do the next day. The next day, they depart back and on a horse and on the way, they find Jessica who immediately gives Sato a very soft and bouncy hug, which pisses Louise off and tells them that she's going to Tabitha's house and suggests they visit as well before getting into her carriage. Louise doesn't care for it, but Sato promises to visit and receives a kick to his face for it. On the way, Jessica tries talking to Tabitha, but she doesn't give a damn as she keeps reading her book while Jessica complains about how she was expelled from her last school, and because of that, her parents almost married her to an old man who wanted to be her sugar daddy. Suddenly, the carriage stops and a farmer tells her that the area ahead is flooded and they have to take a different road, which Jessica finds pretty suspicious. Meanwhile, back at the school, Louise gives all of her laundry to Sato once again, telling him to wash it completely and kicks him out. She is still pissed at him for being happy around Jessica because her small brain can't comprehend that she hits Sato more than all the enemies combined so obviously he won't like her. Stato is used to all this abuse and he happily goes outside to wash the clothes while Gooch is being scolded by yet another blonde hair girl as she saw him with someone else. She asks Sato whether Louise is back before walking inside while Gooch chases after her. After that, Sato spots a giant old rusty pot in front of the kitchen, and when he asks the chef, he tells him to keep it if he wants. He rolls the pot to a secluded location with a happy face ready to put it to use. Back in the carriage, Jessica notices the flooded houses beneath them which is very weird considering there has not been much rain. She also spots a banner which makes her realize that Tabitha belongs to one of the royal families. They finally reach her mansion which is even bigger than Jessica imagined and a butler is ready to take them in. He takes them to the guest room where Jessica sits down while Tabitha goes over to another room to meet her mom. She enters the room to find a blue-haired, frail-looking lady watching outside the window. And when Tabitha announces herself, the old lady freaks out and starts telling her to go back where she came from. Meanwhile, back in the living room, Jessica asks the butler about the picture on the wall, and he explains that the picture belongs to Tabitha's father, who was the younger brother of the king. He was an excellent magician, more powerful than the king himself, while being loved by almost everyone in the kingdom, but one day an unknown assassin shot him in the chest, killing him. After that, when Tabitha and her mom went to the palace for a function, one of the aristocrats tried poisoning Tabitha, but her mom realized something was wrong so like an insane person, instead of throwing it, she drank it herself. The glass had a magic poison which made her mind break and ever since she has been like that as she thinks the doll in her hand is Tabitha, while her actual daughter stays neglected. After that, Tabitha changed as a person and started taking insanely dangerous tasks and missions that even the best mages are scared to do and even killed a three-headed dragon all on her own. After that, she got tired of all this and decided to join an academy far away from all these memories. Back at the academy, Sato with his big brain decided to create a hot tub and is enjoying a night bath under the starry sky watching the two moons while on the other side, the blonde girl has invited Gooch for a date as she holds a secret love potion. Sato goes inside for a dip during which Siesta comes to inspect and is scared by him, dropping the food all over the place. She also gets in the bath to clean herself off and they talk about the moon while Gucci arrives at the table and starts smooth-talking the blondie, but she proposes a toast and tries to put the potion in when Gucci spots Louise walking angrily outside. She walks through the lawn only to find Sato enjoying a bath with Siesta, which makes her sad and she jealously walks back angry at her own feelings for her servant. 
Meanwhile, Gooch is on his game, but Blondie shouts that she saw a naked flying woman distracting him and pours the love potion in. Surprisingly, Louise walks up to them and picks up the glass before drinking it completely and walking off in anger. Sometime later, Seda returns back to the room where he finds Lassie pouting in the bed and asks her what's wrong. At first, she starts being passive-aggressive, but slowly her face becomes red as her actual feelings start coming out and she hugs Sado, while telling him how sad she was when he was taking a bath with Siesta and even confesses that she loves her while a confused Sado looks around to see the blondie peek in the room and tells him it's her fault. Back at the mansion, Tabitha sleeps on the bed while Jessica thinks about the quest that the butler gave Tabitha, which she is supposed to complete as soon as possible. Tabitha tells Jessica to stay in the house till she comes back as it is dangerous, but Jessica tells her that she will come. Her thought is broken when Tabitha starts having a nightmare, so she hugs her to help her sleep. The next day, Sato gets out to do the laundry as usual, but Louise has been clinging on to him ever since. He remembers the conversation he had last night where Blondie told him that the potion was meant for Gooch because he is a cheating loser who can't stay loyal, but Louise accidentally drank it and because she had some feelings for him, she ended up clinging on to him. He asks when would the effect wear off and she doesn't have any idea about that. Louise keeps hanging on to Sato telling him that she can't leave him alone as he will go to another girl. At that very moment, Siesta arrives and immediately Louise starts acting like a crazy ex and starts accusing Sato of cheating on her with Siesta, which makes her uncomfortable and she starts backing off while even Louise gets angry at him for liking Siesta and runs away. He chases after Siesta and finds her washing clothes by the fountain. He tells her that whatever she saw was not true, and it's just a big misunderstanding, but Siesta doesn't reply to him and says it doesn't matter to her. Sato tells her that this is happening because of a love potion that Louise accidentally drank last night and ever since she has been like this. Siesta turns around and tells him that he doesn't need to lie to her as even she knows that a love potion is an illegal thing that no one uses in the academy or even outside before giving him the cold shoulder and walking away. Sato walks back to his room exhausted and finds Louise already on the bed still upset about what happened and as soon as Sato comes, she starts crying over him, saying that she doesn't feel pretty at all. Stato ends up falling off the bed but gets up before hugging her, and says that he will find a way to fix her no matter what. That evening, Sato descends down the stairs into Blondie's room, knocking Gooch aside before telling her to fix Luis back to normal. She says it will happen on its own with time, but Sato gets in her face and tells her to find an antidote or a spell to do it instantly. Gucci tries to interrupt him by saying that he is talking to an aristocrat, but Sato reminds him of the beating he got earlier, which makes Gooch back down immediately. Gucci tells Blondie that she should probably do what he says, but she stands her ground and says it can't happen. Sato decides to use his trump card and says that he knows love potions are illegal, so he will go to the principal and tell him about it. Blondie gets flustered immediately and says she will do it, but the ingredient is present in a dangerous location, which is very hard to reach, but Sato tells her that they will leave tomorrow and after some threats, Blondie agrees. That night, Lucy bites him for no reason before going to sleep while Sato watches over her. The next morning, they all get on their horses and start riding towards a lake while Louise is still asleep in Sato's arms. They arrive near the lake as Gooch runs off ahead while Lucy tells Sato that she knitted him a sweater and proceeds to give him a sweater, which is barely a hat, but Sato still wears it. Suddenly, they hear Gucci scream as he slips into the flooding water from the lake and Blondie watches in awe as this area was supposed to be a village but now it is completely flooded. She says that the water spirit is mad, and that's why this is happening and tells them to wait till the evening as that's when the spirit comes out. By the time evening sets, Blondie gets a frog from her pouch and pricks her finger before putting blood on it and telling it to find the water spirit. The frog jumps off as she tells them that when she was young, she created a pact with the spirit, and that the spirit should still remember her. Suddenly, a huge wave of water starts shooting towards the sky while Blondie announces her name and her family before telling the spirit to show herself. The water takes shape of a woman and the spirit tells Blondie that she remembers her before asking what the hell she wants. Blondie replies that they want the special ingredient, but the spirit denies the request. Sato starts speaking even when Blondie tells him to shut up and he kneels to the ground and with all his heart he requests the spirit to help him and after a while the spirit replies that she will help them if they defeat the humans who have been causing problem for her in this area. Sato immediately accepts while Blondie says that she wants no part in a fight, but Sato blackmails her into agreeing. After the night falls, they hide inside the forest and wait for the assailants to arrive while Louise keeps irritating Sato by being clingy. Suddenly, they notice two cloaked mages by the bank who seem to be chanting spells, so Sato immediately starts moving towards them, but before he can attack, Uchi pulls him aside claiming that they can't attack them like this as the mages seem to be very skilled and can easily destroy Sato. Gucci comes up with the plan that he will distract the mages while Sato launches a surprise attack and defeat them. 
Sagan agrees to the plan and Kucha comes out of hiding before using his earth magic to create a lump of soil and shooting it towards the enemies, but the mages are able to use their wind and fire magic one after the other to easily block the attacks very efficiently. Sega decides to attack, but the fire mage uses a fireball forcing Sato to run, but he turns around and hits it away before running towards them, dodging the ice magic and then cutting through the fireball only to get blasted away by the ice magic once again. He falls to the ground while the enemies walk up to him for the finishing blow, but Louise interrupts and uses her magic to create an explosion, which blows away the hoods and the light shows them that they were fighting against Tabitha and Jessica, who are just as surprised to see them. Stego and the others explain to them what's happening and Jessica tells them that they have been given a quest to defeat the water spirit as she is flooding the area and causing damage. Stego proposes that they should call her up and find out why she is doing that and Blondie immediately starts T-posing and the spirit comes forth. Stego immediately asks her why as she flooded the area which is causing so much trouble and the spirit replies that this is punishment as humans have stolen a treasure that she guards and that's why she is mad at them. And if the treasure isn't returned, she will flood the entire planet with water. Sato asks her what the treasure was and she replies that it's a magical ring that belonged to her and was stolen by a guy named Krom. Sato promises that he will find the ring and bring it back to her no matter what and the spirit being the idiot she is, agrees to this and tosses him the special ingredient and also promises to reduce the water back to normal. Back at the academy, Louise comes back to her normal self and cannot believe what she told him and how she behaved and is mad at him for letting her do all this and tries to hit him while he runs when suddenly the window opens and the princess flies in like the green goblin. Louise immediately goes near her and asks why she is visiting them at night alone as it could be dangerous, but the princess replies that she has very urgent business with them and they need to perform it in secrecy. She tells them that she will be marrying an ugly king from the neighboring kingdom soon to prevent a war between them. She doesn't like the king at all, but it needs to be done for the good of the country. The problem is that she was exchanging some steamy snaps through letters with the prince of a different kingdom, and if those come to surface their marriage might get broken, which will be very problematic. Louise kneels down and says that she will do everything in her power to help her when Satan notices someone behind the door. He shouts at the stranger to show themselves, and it turns out to be Gooch who comes inside and greets the princess before saying that he heard everything that she said and would love to assist her. Both Sate and Louise seem to be pissed at this flamboyant f but the princess knows his father and allows him to aid in the mission as well. Later that night, Sato goes out to do the laundry and Siesta approaches him apologizing for not believing about the love potion incident, but Sato tells her not to worry about it before asking her about any scientist in the area. She takes him to an old scientist who is studying dragons for some time while trying to find the remains of the last dragon and he says that a familiar like Seda was summoned a long time ago by a legendary mage and the familiar used void magic, which has never been seen again. He also says that even Seda has the same mark on his hand but they don't know anything else about it. Seda goes back to the room and dresses Louise up who seems to be low on confident as she thinks she is not talented enough to take care of such an important mission but Sato tells her that she is strong enough to do this, but Louise sadly walks into the bed and lays down. The next morning, they all get ready on horses while Louise looks at the ring Henrietta gave her, while saying that a bodyguard will go with them. They stand there waiting for the guard when a mole erupts from the soil who turns out to be Gucci's familiar and after hugging him for a while, the mole jumps on Louise and starts trying to get the ring as Gucci explains that he is a big fan of jewelry. Suddenly, a huge gust of wind blasts the mole away who gets knocked out to Gucci's horror while a person descends from the sky on a griffin. The guy turns out to be a white-haired cool dude named Ward, who is a famous knight. He directly walks towards Louise and apologizes for being so late and Sato learns that Louise is engaged to this man. Ward picks her up in his arms and says that they will begin their journey now. They start traveling while Gucci tells Sato how cool the griffin knights are he is annoyed at how everyone is on their knees blowing Ward's horn. After traveling through a barren valley, they finally reach the town, and as soon as they enter, everyone starts looking at them while Gucci explains that this town was made by an awesome earth mage just like him. They finally reach the hotel and Ward says that they will rest here and leave tomorrow, but Sato doesn't reply. Louise tells Sato to not be rude and after Ward leaves, she tells him that her parents fixed this marriage, but Sato still is acting coldly and jealous, so she tells him that Ward is much better at fighting and is bigger than Sato as well before walking away. At the feast in the evening, Ward praises Louise to summon a human familiar which is unheard of before asking Gooch whether he lost the duel against Sato which makes him choke. Ward asks Sato whether it was the first time he held a sword and Sato says yes, uninterested, while Louise praises Ward for knowing so much. Ward looks at Sato and asks him out for a duel which surprises them but Sato is still pissed and says yes in an offhand manner while Louise tells him to apologize but he doesn't. 
Ward gets up and says that they should go to sleep and like a Jiga Chad, takes Louise away in his room while everyone watches. Sato goes with Gitch who enjoys the night sky before heading out for some clubbing, leaving Sato alone. He asks his sword whether he knows anything about the human familiar that came before and the sword replies that it was owned by the human thousands of years ago and that it can only be used by a human familiar like him. He goes outside while the sword says that Sato has the latent power of using any weapon perfectly if he wants and tells him the reason why the golden sword broke was because it was a fake weapon. He asks whether they can defeat Ward but the sword replies that it depends on Sato alone. Meanwhile, Ward drinks with an underage Louise and talks about how she used to cry in a boat in the middle of the lake before telling her that she has latent powers inside of her. He then tells her that they should get married immediately after this mission is over as he can't wait for her to be legal. He tries to kiss her, but she remembers Sato at that moment and Ward stops and says that her heart has already been taken so it's no use. After that, he moves outside the room and tells her that she would want her to marry him by the end of this mission and goes out. The next day, Sato and Ward meet in an alley ready for the duel, and even though Louise tells them not to fight, none of them are ready to back off. Sato takes out his sparring sword as Ward does the same and immediately starts attacking him from all directions while Ward simply dodges Ad back off before blocking his attack and pushing him away with his sword. Ward compliments his speed, but Sato isn't in the mood for talks and runs up the wall before jumping in for an attack, but Ward blocks it before going on the offensive lunging at him again and again, before using a magic spell to blast him away into some wooden barrels while Louise runs up to him. Ward walks up and tells Sato that he can never defeat a mage which means he can never protect Louise and walks off. That evening, Sato looks out the balcony while tears roll down as he remembers what Ward said when Louise approaches him. She asks whether he is crying, but he says that alphas don't cry and it's just sweat in his eyes. She tells him to knock it off as he lost to the best knight in the kingdom and says that he should get over it, but Sato pushes her away and tells her to piss off. Louise sadly turns around and moves back and tells him that she is going to marry Ward after this mission. After some time, Gucci walks up to Sato and tells him that they have to leave when suddenly the ground rumbles and they turn around to see a giant golem erupt from the ground and to their surprise on top of the golem stood Fop the thief who was supposed to be in prison. Meanwhile, Louise asks Ward where the two guys are but he tells her that they went back home as they were scared and before she could say anything the griffin starts moving through the stairs and they find the tree or the magical ship is docked and is ready to leave. Back at the balcony, Yuchi hides behind Sato as Fock uses his golem to attack, but Sato cleanly cuts its hands off impressing Fock, but she simply uses magic to regenerate the arm back. Gyush immediately uses his earth magic to summon a bunch of fighting dolls that surround the golem for an attack, but the golem makes quick work of them, and throws the last doll at a horrified Gyush knocking him down. The golem walks towards them when suddenly a light blast hits the golem and he falls down on its knees while they look over to see Tabitha and Jessica on a dragon who descend down on the balcony. After hearing the commotion, a bunch of locals arrive at the balcony, which forces folk to run away while they hear the loud horn of the departing ship. By the time Meg falls, Sato gets his hands on the receptionist who tells him that Louise and Ward have left quite some time ago towards the ship so he immediately comes out and asks Gooch, where is the ship docked but Gooch, he says that it's too late, and shows him the flying ship moving above them, while all Sato can do is shout. Meanwhile, Louise looks out of the ship very conflicted while Ward tells her that he will never leave her alone like Sato did, and she remembers how he pushed her off making her sad. She then looks up and tells Ward that she accepts his proposal of marriage. Back on the ground, Sato sits while Sato tells Geech that he believes that Folk was working with Ward and she simply attacked them so that they can be distracted and miss the ship. Gooch is surprised at such a bold statement while Jessica tells them that the next ship will depart the next morning and they can't do anything apart from wait. Suddenly, the ground beneath Gucci starts rumbling again, scaring him as he falls over, but it turns out to be his mole. Meanwhile, on the ship, War gives Luis some more alcohol promising to marry her as soon as they are done with the mission before asking her about more details, but Luis refuses to state them as the princess told her not to. The next morning, they finally reach their destination and walk inside a church, where they are immediately surrounded by a bunch of guards who are hiding in the shadows. Louise hides behind Ward while he states that they are here to meet the prince, but the commander of the guard tells them that no one knows about this place. Louise speaks up and says that Princess Henrietta told her about this place and shows the ring on her hand and the commander immediately puts back his sword before taking his glove off to reveal a similar looking ring. He tells her to brofist him, and as soon as they do it, rainbows emerge from their rings as the commander apologizes for the mistake and takes his helmet off to disclose that he himself is the prince of this kingdom called Tudor. Later that evening, Louise hands him the letter sent by Henrietta and the prince checks it and reads it before getting up and taking the letter from a drawer and hands it over to her. 
Louise looks up to him and asks what did the letter say and whether there were some more steamy messages, but the prince told her that he can't disclose that before saying that his country is in the midst of a civil war between the royal family and the aristocrats, who are being manipulated by a third party. He thanks her for getting the letter to him while Louise tells him to be safe. The next morning she wakes up to find Ward waiting for her outside. He says that the mission is now completed and tells her that they are going to marry right now and right here while the prince is the witness. Louise gets nervous and breaks away from him saying that she can't do it right now and they should at least go back to their country but Ward grabs her from behind and doesn't let go while disclosing that he is the third party that is causing the civil war in this country. Louise is horrified and somehow breaks free before running away but crashes into another weird looking man who takes out his ring and uses it to control Louise as she loses her consciousness. That very evening the arrangements are made and Ward takes her up to the altar where the prince reads their vows and Ward accepts while Louise tries to gain control over herself and decline, but the man is still controlling her. As she almost agrees to the marriage but Sato ends up crashing their wedding while screaming her name, surprising everyone. This breaks the control over Louise's mind and she takes her gown off while he tells her that the mole kept chasing her jewelry and led them there. The prince who is confused tells the guards to arrest Sato but before Louise could tell him the truth, Ward pushes her aside and stabs the prince in the chest before pushing him to the floor. Louise grabs the prince, but the prince simply removes his ring and hands it over to her, before bleeding to death while she screams. Sato gets ready to fight, but Ward simply uses his magic to blast them all away before walking up to Sato and putting a sword on his neck. Sato realizes that he is the mastermind behind everything while Ward tells Louise to marry him so that they rule the world together, but she refuses while Sato grabs his sword and his mark starts glowing brightly. He gets mad at him for playing the Louise's heart while Ward walks back as Sato gets up and his old rusty sword becomes shiny and new. Ward immediately uses his magic but to his surprise the sword simply absorbs the magic before Sato jumps in the air for an attack as Ward uses his magic again but Sato cuts through the magic and attacks him before landing on the ground while Ward falls over. He gets up once again and tells them that he already killed the prince and now he also has the letter which was given to Louise. He then uses his magic to destroy the church as everything starts burning and pieces of rubble fall to the ground but Sato stops Louise from following him while a burning rock falls over them but Tabitha uses her magic to create a shield and flies them over to themselves. By the time night falls the fire has gone out while Louise is still unconscious dreaming about herself in a boat but this time instead of Ward she sees Sato with her. She finally wakes up as Sato was taking advantage of her, but decides to let it slide for once as they head back home. The next morning Louise presents herself in front of the princess and hands her the ring while informing that the prince got assassinated by Ward and the letter also got stolen. She claims responsibility for everything and starts crying but the princess stops her and hugs her while crying thanking her for everything that she did. Louise is later called in by the headmaster while the magic scientist was also there requesting a vacation. After the scientist went away, the headmaster tells Luis that the scientist believes he found a place where the remains of the last dragon could be found. The headmaster doubts its existence but lets him go regardless. He then asks Luis about the report and she tells him everything that happened while he listens patiently and assures that none of it was her fault. She later asks him why did she summon a human familiar and the headmaster says that the last time a legendary human familiar was summoned by the strongest mage on earth, which makes Luis sad as she can't even use basic magic. After that she returns back to her room and gets dressed while Sato comes to the room after doing laundry but finds even more dirty clothes and complains about it, which results in Luis becoming a dom, hitting him with whips before telling him to get lost and throwing a pillow at his face. Sato goes down angrily and hits the pot only to hurt himself when he spots Siesta walking by in different clothes. They sit down and she tells him that the vacations have started and she's going back home. She tells him that her great grandfather was always claimed that he came from a different world just like Sato, and at that time there used to be two dragons. This interests Sato while even Jessica overhears it as Siesta tells him that one of the dragons flew into the sun and died while the other dragon was ridden by her great-grandfather, but none of them were ever seen again. According to the legend the remains of the dragons are still somewhere in her village. This reminds Sato of the conversation he had with the scientist about dragons and he asks Siesta whether she can take him back to her village and she agrees. Meanwhile, Louise comes outside to try and find Sato as she feels bad about hitting him and kicking him out and practice her apologizing skills but can't find him anywhere. While walking, she spots Sato going out of the school on a horse with Siesta, which shocks her so she quickly goes over to the cook and asks where Siesta went. The cook replies that she went back to her village and Louise walks back angry at Sato for leaving her alone. On the other hand, Sato rides through the jungle alongside Siesta on the horse while she asks whether it is okay for him to leave without informing Louise but Sato is still angry at her and says that it's fine. 
It finally reached the village and Sigo tells her to go ahead and let him know where he should start his investigation. Siesta thanks him for accompanying her and rushes off to her house while even the scientist enters the same village to find the remains. After a while, Siesta returns back with a map and both Sato and her go over it, trying to find out the exact location when suddenly the bushes start rustling and a creature comes out of it that turns out to be a salamander accompanied by Jessica. He looks up to find a dragon flying over them alongside Tabitha and finally a mole comes out of the ground alongside Geech standing as flamboyantly as ever. He asks why they are here and Jessica replies that even they are here to find the treasure that is famed to be alongside the dragon. Some time later they finally find the cave and excitedly, they all enter while the salamander lights their way. They walk in a single file when suddenly Tabitha claims that there is someone else apart from them in this cave, and they all become alert and Sato takes out his sword while Siesta hides behind him. Suddenly someone uses magic to break one of the rocky spikes and warns them that the next attack will be aimed at them. They get ready for a face-off and Jessica tells them to stop as she recognizes the voice and as the light falls on the attacker, they all see the scientist named Colbert, who is surprised to see them alongside Louise. Colbert immediately starts checking the map with excitement while Sato and Louise are still pissed at each other as she tells him that she just came here as a research assistant before they start moving again. They finally exit a cave into some lush green forests and through the thick trees they discover an abandoned and overgrown shed. Everyone starts checking the shed and the lock on it while Tabitha is looking at a different thing nearby. Seda walks over to her and has a look only to be surprised to see Japanese text. Louise and Tabitha are unable to read it but Sato tells them that it is written in the language from his land. Meanwhile, the others succeed in opening the shed and enter it to find something that they don't understand. Stato enters after them and is immediately surprised to see what's inside, and as he runs his hand over it, his mark starts glowing as he claims that this is an aircraft, which was misidentified by the people of this world as some weird kind of dragon. He tells Siesta that he thought she looked different and now he realizes that her black hair and black eyes are due to the Japanese blood running inside her courtesy of her grandfather. Suddenly Colbert calls Sato and tells him that he might be able to return back to his home with the plane's help, which surprises Louise. He says that according to legend, two dragons were flying in the sky and one of them flew into the eclipse, while the other one couldn't. Siesta chimes in that her great-grandfather circled in the air for some time before landing back to the ground, while Culver tells him that his timing must have been off. According to him, he can return back to his own world if he flies this weird-looking dragon into the eclipse, which might be some sort of a portal. Later that day, they are able to transport the plane back to the academy where everyone gathers to marvel at this technology that they have never seen before. While looking at it, Stata remembers that Colbert showed him a bottle of some liquid which he thought was Dragon's blood and goes in to check it. His suspicions were right as the liquid is simply gasoline and he tells Colbert that they can use this to power the aircraft and Colbert promises to make some more so that they can use the plane. Meanwhile, he gets in and starts checking all the instruments inside of it to make sure everything is working fine and to his surprise it all comes naturally to him. The sword tells him that this plane must be meant for a war and Sato has the power to use any weapon he wants, that's why he knows how to use it. He spots Louise on the other side who looks at him before turning and walks away while thinking whether Sato will actually go. Suddenly, Gucci runs in on a horse terrified and tells Louise that there is a big problem. At first, Louise brushes him off, but he claims that Ward has taken control of the neighboring country Albion and has declared war on their kingdom. Meanwhile, Sato, who doesn't know about it, sits in the plane wondering when the next eclipse will happen so that he can go back home. Back in Albion, the bald guy named Cromwell sits on a throne happy with his plan going smoothly and thanks folk for stealing the ring from the water spirit for him, while he checks the map and makes his war plans to conquer the country of Tristane, where Princess Henrietta rules. Ward tells him that everything is prepared and Tristan can't defend itself right now as Albion's dragon knights are enough to defeat their forces. Cromwell asks when they should attack and Ward replies that they should attack on the day of the solar eclipse so they can take advantage of the darkness. The next morning, Sato goes over to Louise and tries to make up with her and says that he's going to leave in three days but Louise acts bratty and tells him that she doesn't care which hurts him and he walks back angrily while Louise looks at him sadly. Meanwhile, the royal palace a war council is called where the commanders claim that Albion's army is too big and they don't think the war against them can be won at any cost, so their suggestion is to simply surrender the nation and save their lives. Henrietta becomes a girl boss and says that they will never surrender as it is a matter of their honor and pride so she will lead the troops herself and her mother the queen simply agrees. Back at the academy, Sato watches the moons through the balcony with sadness as he thinks that just in three days he will leave before going back inside and sitting on his mat of straws. 
Meanwhile, all the mages of the academy are called inside of the hall for a meeting, where the headmaster tells them that war is about to break out in a couple of days and the princess herself is leading the army, so the academy will stay closed until further instructions, which scare the students who plan on going back to their homes while Gooch proudly claims that he will be joining the army, but after being poked by Jessica, he admits that he is forced to do that because his father is a commander. After hearing this, Louise walks back to her room and turns on the light before going near a sleeping Sato and bidding him a final goodbye as she plans to fight on the front line as well. The next morning, Sato wakes up to find a note by his bed and when he reads it, he finds out that Louise has fired him and said that he can go wherever he wants. Sato finds it weird and takes it to Jessica and Tabitha who look at it and Jessica tells him about the upcoming war which he had no idea about and says that according to her Louise went to the Princess Henrietta to fight alongside her, which turns out to be true as Louise pledges herself to Henrietta who accepts her to fight side by side in the upcoming war. Meanwhile in Siesta's village, she works in the farm while remembering that in a couple of days, Sato will be gone when she suddenly spots a flying ship in the sky which is filled with warriors from Albion that are being controlled by Cromwell, with his ring as he tells them that Tristan has refused to surrender so they are going to war. Back at the castle, Princess and the rest get ready to war as the news reaches them about the warship being spotted in the nearby village and the Queen says one final goodbye before Henrietta departs for the battlefield. By the time morning comes, Sato starts checking the plane out once again while Jessica tells him that he should meet with Luis once as he will never get the chance to do so again, but Sato refuses to meet her. During that time, Colbert arrives with barrels of gasoline that he was able to create during these days and tells Sato that he would have made more but war has broken out and Siesta Village has become the first place where the battle is going to start. Meanwhile, Henrietta and her forces are marching towards the village and she thanks Luis once again for accompanying her but Luis's mind is stuck on Sato and how he is going to leave soon when suddenly they stop as they finally see the warship in the sky, while dragons fly alongside it. Back at the academy, Sato tells everyone they can't let Albion destroy the village and is going to stop them with the help of this plane and even though Jessica tells him that the plane might get damaged, which means he can never go back home, but Sato is willing to do anything to protect the village and tells Colbert to start the engine with his magic. Colbert starts the engine and Sato starts moving the plane straight ahead but realizes that the space isn't enough for him to take off and that he will probably crash in the wall ahead, but at the last moment, Tabitha the MVP uses her wind magic to help him take off and Sato disappears in the sky. After that, Tabitha calls her dragon as she gets ready to take part in the war as well and even Jessica agrees to go with her. Meanwhile, Sato flies towards the village at full speed and realizes that this plane even has a bunch of ammo left from before so he can actually make a difference while Tabitha and Jessica follow him. Back on the ground, the princess finally devises the battle plan and tells the griffin knights to attack the dragon knights while the rest of her forces will try to move towards the battleship to try and infiltrate it. The griffin squad flies ahead and tries to use its wind magic against the dragon knights, but the dragons are much faster and dodge out of the way before delivering a powerful fire blast killing the griffins. Meanwhile, the cavalry rides towards the battleship while only Gitch has enough sense to question how will they ever enter the ship when it's in the air, but the commander keeps marching forward while the battleship shoots its cannons laying hellfire on the cavalry men again and again which topples Gitch off his course but the Indian commander still moves forward while Gucci tries to make sense of this strategy. On the other hand, Siesta gathers the remaining villagers and tries to take them into the forest where they are all hiding while Henrietta is looking at the battle unfold realizing that her place is in the kitchen. Suddenly, they all look up to see the eclipse taking place when they suddenly hear a loud noise coming from the air and notice Sato flying his plane which shocks everyone on the ground as they thought it was just the legend, but Sato looks at the battlefield and decides to piss on his plans of going back home and takes a U-turn straight towards the battle and shows them the true power of America by shooting all of the animals in his way, killing them one by one while the dragon knights are confused by the thing that is chasing them. He keeps going on a killing spree which attracts the attention of Folk and Ward who decide to go into the battle themselves while Sato gets rid of most of the dragon knights as the army looks in awe from below. He finally kills the last dragon when suddenly another super fast dragon dodges his bullets and appears behind him carrying Ward himself who takes his sword out and sends a wind magic towards him. Sato immediately gets his sword out and absorbs the magic while taking a U-turn and getting ready to smoke Ward's ass, but his ammo runs out at the last moment. Meanwhile on the ground, Falk creates a golem and attacks the army while Ward attacks Sato again and again who absorbs the magic as he can't do anything else. Gucci ends up running into Tabitha and Jessica who look at the battlefield to see the golem destroying everything and decide to meet Folk and her golem Hedden. Gucci tries to run away but is stopped by Tabitha while Jessica provokes Folk by making fun of her. Folk is ready to attack, 
but Gucci uses his magic to cover the golem into petals and then through alchemy converts it into oil, which is then ignited by Jessica creating a huge fire around the golem which burns to ashes and falls apart, while Folk runs away and is chased by Gucci. Meanwhile, Sato is out of auctions and starts getting hit by Ward and one of the wings catch fire but before Ward can win the killing blow, he is attacked by Tabitha and Jessica and falls to the ground. Louise the Eddie jumps off Tabitha's dragon towards Sato, and Tabitha uses her magic to make Louise safely land while Sato grabs her hand and pulls her in the cockpit. He shouts at her for doing something so stupid, but Louise starts crying and apologizes for her behavior. During that time, Ward regains control and attacks Sato head on once again while he takes out his sword, ready to protect Louise with his own life, which awakens something inside her and suddenly his mark starts glowing brightly as Ward attacks Sato and cuts his cheek. Suddenly, Louise loses control of her body and get up aiming his wand at Ward while Sato tells her to get in. His sword tells him that Louise's latent abilities are coming out and he should buy her some time but Ward keeps attacking them and injures the engine some more creating smoke as the plane starts going down and Sato realizes that the plane is too damaged and he doesn't have any control while Ward flies in for the final hit when Louise releases her magic and a huge white light is produced which covers everything in the sky, enveloping Ward and burning the warship to bits as the onlookers watch from below. When the brightness produces, Louise falls in Sato's arms unconscious while he tries to gain control over his plane but can't so he tries to crash land the aircraft as safely as possible over some grass. Thankfully, they land safely as the eclipse gets over as well while Tabitha and Jessica walk towards the burnt ship in awe and disbelief at Louise did this magic when suddenly Cromwell walks out dazed and immediately uses his ring to force both the girls on the ground and they are unable to do anything when Gucci simply boinks this fool and knocks him out while telling them that Fock ran away. Louise finally wakes up and scolds him for missing the eclipse and destroying his plane but he tells her that he has decided to stay here with her which makes her happy and they finally make up with each other. The war is finally over and the heroes get Medal of Honors which Louise goes back to show Sato, but finds him missing so she was off to find him once again through the lawns and the gardens only to find him talking with Siesta once again. He spots her and gets scared as she takes out her whip ready to discipline him once again. Some time has passed and Sato finds himself inside the aircraft again flying towards the eclipse as the mark on his hand glows brightly. He enters the eclipse which acts like a black hole and after going through it, he opens his eyes to find a lot of familiar looking buildings as he looks around the posters and the people to finally realize that he is back in Japan. He flies through the streets happy to be back again and looks to his side to find Louise but finds no one and starts searching for her only to realize that he came here all by himself. Suddenly all the memories start flooding about how he was dropped in this magical world where he got beaten up by Louise and even fought in an actual war all to come back to his own world but starts crying as he realizes there is no point in living without Louise. He shouts her name and begs to be sent back to her when the lever of the aircraft breaks in half and it starts taking a nosedive to the ground and just as it hits the ground, Sato wakes up from his dream finding himself on the floor as he fell off from the bed. Louise wakes up and asks what's up with him but Sato is so happy to see her that he simply runs up and hugs her tightly saying that he doesn't want to leave her ever which makes her feel really good, but this woman is his saddest and pushes him to the ground before telling him to sleep again. Sato silently gets up and lays down on the bed before going to sleep. The next day back at the castle, the coronation ceremony is being held as Henrietta is going to be crowned the Queen of Tristane for her performance in the last war, where she was able to save their country from total destruction. She doesn't seem very interested in the title, but the minister claims that Tristane is still in danger, and they need her leadership now more than ever. The entire town seems to be in a festive mood, ready to celebrate her coronation. Meanwhile, Cromwell is locked inside the dungeons, which is breached by an unknown woman who walks up to Cromwell's cell and tells him that she is disappointed by him. Cromwell starts begging to give her one more chance and claims that there was a suddenly unknown magic which created light that destroyed all of his armies. The woman seems to take note of that before showing him the purple ring and uses it to kill him. Back at the academy, Louise and Sigdo get ready to go outside and watch the parade, but before they move out, Louise gives him a pair of funky-looking glasses which she claims to be a family heirloom and tells Sato to wear it as they will look good on him. Sato puts it on but is unable to remove it afterwards which seems to be Louise's plan. They move outside where he spots Siesta and immediately goes over to her inviting her to go and watch parade with them, but she refuses and suddenly Sato's glasses light up. Louise arrives from behind and tells him that these are special glasses that glow up whenever the wearer is looking at anyone other than their master with ulterior motives and uses her lightning magic to shock him. She then drags him on the lawn when they encounter Duch and Blondie who seem to be going to watch the parade as well. Sato ends up looking at Blondie and his glasses light up once again, injuring Louise who shocks him once again, even scaring the headmaster who seriously considers kicking them out of the school. 
She drags him once again where he spots Jessica and his glasses light up and he receives punishment before being dragged again and he sees Tabitha and receives punishment. His glasses keep lighting as he sees girls out of habit, while Louise makes sure that he is properly punished for that. They finally move outside and Sato decides to cover his eyes so he can't see anything while Louise is ready with her whip if anything happens. Suddenly, they hear some noise and walk over to see the princess riding down the street alongside her entire entourage and Louise tells Sato to look at the princess, which he does, and she looks as beautiful as ever, which makes Sato's glasses light up once again, and this angers Louise beyond belief and she shocks him to oblivion, scaring everyone as the guards become alert and surround them, while Sato is unconscious. They are captured and taken to the palace where Louise is denied entry to meet the princess and she takes out her wand in anger, but one of the short-haired guard named Angs is an American and pulls a gun to her face telling her to drop the wand. Lousy tells her to release Sato as he didn't do anything, and she was the one who caused the explosion, but Agnes refuses. Meanwhile, Sato is locked inside of the dungeons where he angrily tries to throw the glasses away but stops while thinking that if things keep going this way, Louise will get married to some rich aristocrat, while he will just watch from afar like a dog and support her only to be known as a loser after he dies. He lays down on the ground while dreaming about the princess when suddenly he is woken from his dream by the princess himself who tells she's here to see him. He tells her that he never dreamt about her, while she grabs his hands and tells him that she has a favor to ask. Sago starts thinking about the princess once again and receives a punch to the face by Agnes knocking him down while she takes out his gun and points at him. The princess tells her to back off as she wants to talk to him alone and Sato teases her from behind which gets him a kick to his head again before the princess stops her and she moves out. The princess tells him that she saw him and Louise using a magic that has never been seen before which ended the battle then and there and wants their help once again. She explains that the ministers and the generals are advising her to march on Albion at once to take advantage of their victory and end this war once and for all but she doesn't want any more bludge and wants to end this conflict quickly for which she will need their help. She tells him that they are one of her very few allies and he ends up agreeing to it. She thanks him and tells him to stay at the academy with Louise for now, but to be very careful as there are a lot of spies around and tells him that someone infiltrated the dungeons and killed Cromwell. She believes that this can't be a one-person job as the locks on the door were multi-layered and only an inside man can open the locks and then the murderer walked inside and used their magic spell to completely suck the life out of Cromwell as only his outer body remained. Henrietta looks at him and tells him that he can ask for anything that he wants from her, and she will give it to him for the help that he has provided her, but before he can think of anything, the princess instructs Agnes to let Louise in, and she enters with her head bowed down which scares Sato. He immediately rushes back in the corner telling her that he wasn't looking at the princess, but Louise starts crying and jumps at him apologizing for attacking him and saying that she was very worried for him. Stega looks at her lovingly and comforts her, and by the time evening falls they are in the carriage and headed back to the academy, while Louise shows him a special book given to her by the princess, which is supposed to have void spells in it, but when she opens it, it is completely empty. They think about it before Sato comes to the conclusion that the book is a modern art piece which wants to say that you should always fight with an empty mind. Louise asks him whether he wants to go home and Sato honestly replies that he does but he doesn't want to leave her alone in this dangerous world alone and wants to fight the upcoming battles with her to bring peace.